As soon as I moved those fingers for the first time, the only way I could describe it is like instant power and empowerment and like I'm a superhero. From revolutionising disability to changing how we understand our own bodies. I think that health logging chip implants can really be a lifesaver. Our relationship with technology is changing and changing fast. Robots like me will simply add another dimension, an option, to how communication with machines can be done. So what does the future hold for both humans and machines? And in the 21st century, how close can they get? We've come to the Swedish capital, Stockholm, a place that knows a thing or two about technological innovation. Sweden's often dubbed the Silicon Valley of Europe. It's set to become the world's first cashless society, and it's here that the tech giants Skype, Spotify and Klarna first started out. But it's the public's willingness to adopt new technologies that's positioned them at the cutting edge. Right now I have two implants. I have one that sits here in my arm that I store some data on. And then the interesting one is the one that sits here right below my collarbone. And that is a temperature sensing device. Hannes Jolbad has worked at the forefront of subdermal implant technology for the last decade. He's been involved in the chipping of up to a thousand people, implanting microchips the size of a grain of rice in their hands or arms. The technology can then be used to pay contactlessly for travel, shopping, even letting you back into your own house. And now it's being developed to read vital signs like body temperature with the hope it can have medical uses. There you go. When I recently got about with the Omicron, I could uh, track my fever curve very neatly just by swiping myself uh, at home. My vision is also that 10 years from now, millions of people will be having these health sensor devices. Microchipping has become catnip for online conspiracy theorists, but there are legitimate questions around what the data it collects could be used for, were it to fall into the wrong hands. Is there a danger that that could be abused by dictatorial governments or companies that are based outside of the jurisdictions that, that you usually operate in? My take on this is that this problem, to some extent, already exists. I think this technology is really harmless compared to many other things out there from, for example, a surveillance point of view. I think your browser history or your smartphone operator will actually tell a lot more about you than uh, a little device that measures your heart rate. While Hannes has been working on putting tech into humans, someone just across town has taken humans out of the equation altogether. How are you today? I'm splendid. Thanks for asking. It's so nice to meet in the physical world again. Yes, it definitely is. Meet Furhat, a social robot designed to read and respond to human emotions. Furhat's creator says its value lies in its ability to do away with biases programmed into humans by society. How are you better at conducting a job interview than a human? Two key aspects are that I perform exactly the same process at every single interview I do. There is no such thing as being tired or having a bad day for a robot. Additionally, when summarizing the interview for the human recruiter, I can do that without the risk of being biased about, for example, skin color, name or gender. But for all the futuristic potential of human-machine communication, there are many more practical applications for bionics that can have life-changing effects in the present. Everybody deserves to have like four limbs, that is a human right. Tilly lost both of her hands after contracting meningitis as a baby and struggled for years to find prosthetics that were right for her. But now, working with Open Bionics, the company that made her arms, Tilly and her mum are helping to forge a new path for prosthetics they're all muscle operated and it's what I'm doing with the same muscles that I use today that moves the fingers on these hands, squeeze to close and flex it open. It really has just been like a replacement of my limb. Now it just feels like an extra part of me and now I definitely wear these to kind of accentuate the beauty of the, that difference that I've been told a, a lot, a large portion of my life by certain people that I'm supposed to hide. So it's like, it's a real empowering thing for me as well, because it's quite the opposite really of what a disability is. Now people see them and they're like, that's an enhancement, it's an advancement. And in a couple of years, who knows, it might get so much better and people will want to replace their actual organic limbs with stuff like this, which to me, 
missing my hands anyway is really, really exciting. Whether the future is human, bionic or something in between, the technology we carry and use every day has already transformed our lives in ways that would have once been unimaginable.